A very important and prevalent operation in any classical computing system is the ability to copy data from one place to another. For example, data stored in memory needs to be loaded into registers in order to get processed by a CPU. So an obvious question is, what is the unitary operation to copy a quantum state from a set of qubits to another? Surprisingly, the answer to this is that this operation does not exist. And the proof for this is what is known as the no cloning theorem. So let's take a look at why this is the case and present an example using Qiskit. When dealing with digital classical systems, it's very easy to copy information from one place to another. For example, let's say we have an AND gate and we want to take that output into two different places. So we can just add a wire to take that to a NOT gate and then add a different wire to take that somewhere else, let's say to the input of an OR gate. So this branching over here is effectively copying the output of this AND gate, let's say this was a one, into the inputs of two different gates. And of course, we need to make sure that this AND gate can physically drive all the circuitry we attach to it, but as long as that's not a constraint, we can copy information just by wiring it the way we want. Now we said that in the case of reversible circuits, we could copy information by using a CX gate. So if we have, for example, two classical bits, if we initialize this bottom bit in state zero, and the top bit is in state B, where B is either zero or one, we know that here at the output, we're also gonna have B, and at the bottom, we're effectively going to copy that information. Why? Well, because if B is zero, this X gate gets not applied, so we also get zero here at the output. But if this top B is one, then the X gate gets applied to the zero, which gets negated, and then this B at the bottom also becomes one. So a CX gate effectively copies classical information in a reversible circuit. But what if we want to construct a unitary that does this for quantum data? So basically what we want is some sort of operation, let's call it theta, that takes as an input some state Q, which can be a superposition state, and gives us at the output, again, that same state Q, but in two separate registers or two separate qubits in this particular case. So the question would be, how do we construct this? And for the input of this bottom qubit, we could take this to be an arbitrary state, let's call it P, but for simplicity, let's just say this is state zero, and we can show that it doesn't matter what we pick this bottom qubit to be, the analysis we're gonna do remains the same. So what we're going to show next is that constructing this gate theta is impossible for the case in which Q is a qubit, so it belongs to our Hilbert space of dimension two, and this can obviously be generalized for states of more than one qubit. So to show why this is the case, let's first assume that we have a state A, where A is also a qubit, and then we tensor it with zero because that's the input to our circuit. And then we say that if we apply this unitary theta, that should give us A tensor A, if theta works correctly, because it's supposed to be a copy operation. Now, if we have another valid state, let's call it B, well, applying this theta should give us B tensor B. And once again, if we have a state C, we should get C tensor C. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we select this state C to be an equal superposition of states A and B. Well, let's replace this expression in both sides of this equation. So we have theta applied to this equal superposition state, which is tensored with state zero. And then we have this state tensor with itself. So here on the left, use the distributive law to group these terms. So we have alpha of A tensor zero and beta B tensor zero. And then because unitary operations are linear, we can distribute this operation theta to act on these two states. But from these two expressions above, we already know what applying theta to A tensor zero and theta to B tensor zero should give us. It should give us A tensor A and B tensor B. So this expression should be alpha of A tensor A plus beta 
of B tensored B. So this is for the left hand side of this expression. Now let's see what we get for the right hand side. Here we just have alpha squared A tensored A plus alpha beta A tensored B plus beta alpha B tensored A plus beta squared B tensored B. So what we get here on the right, which is what we want, recall this expression on the right is what we expect to get, which is C tensor C, is not necessarily equal to what we get here on the left, which is the output we get from this unitary if we put as an input a state C that is a superposition of state A and B. So this equality holds only for certain values of alpha and beta. Notice specifically that on the right, we have these two cross terms, which means that either alpha or beta must be equal to zero, making beta or alpha equal to one. In other words, we can only construct a unitary capable of copying two states A and B when they are orthogonal to each other, but this won't be able to copy a superposition of the two of them. And a trivial example of this is of course our CX gate that we already covered, where we know that if we initialize the second qubit on state zero, well, this will effectively copy the first qubit onto the second one, but this holds true because zero and one are orthogonal states. And why do they have to be orthogonal? Well, let's revisit our assumptions. We started by assuming that this copy gate could copy both states A and B into a second qubit. And then we said, well, if we have now a superposition of A and B in the form of a state C, we can indeed copy state C, but only if alpha and beta meet the following condition, either alpha is equal to one and beta is equal to zero, or alpha is equal to zero and beta is equal to one. So let's look at both of those scenarios. In the case where we have alpha equal to zero and beta equal to one, state C is equal to state B. What does this mean? That we can copy state C as long as it does not have any components that belong to state A, which means that B must be orthogonal to A. Similarly, in the case in which alpha is equal to one and beta is equal to zero, well, our state C is going to be equal to A, which in that case means that we will only be able to copy a state that has no components that belong to state B. So the conclusion is that if we start by assuming that we can construct a gate theta capable of copying state A and state B, it is simply not possible for this gate to copy a state C composed of a superposition of these two states. Furthermore, states A and B must be orthogonal to each other. And what this shows is that it is impossible to construct a general unitary capable of copying some arbitrary state we have no prior knowledge of. So let's dive into some specific examples using Qiskit. So let's say we want to generate an arbitrary state and find a quantum gate that can copy it from one qubit to another. So let's first create a circuit that generates a state using an RY gate with an angle theta applied on qubit zero, where this theta is some arbitrary angle that for now we're gonna define to be, uh, let's say pi over three, then we can draw that circuit and generate the state vector at the output of that. So let, we get a superposition state where this is equal to cosine of theta over two state zero plus sine of theta over two state one. And we want to copy that exact same state to a second qubit. So naively, what we would do is just create the same circuit that generates that state, but then followed by a CX gate between qubits one and zero, because we know that the CX gate copies state zero and state one individually into a second qubit. So let's change the name of the circuit and display it. And then if we look at the state vector at the output, we get this superposition state. It looks very similar to the one for the single qubit, but it's entangled. So to compare it to what we would generate if this was copied exactly to have the same state on the top and on the bottom, well, what we can do is create a quantum circuit 
that applies that ry rotation to both qubits. And if we look at the state vector for that particular circuit, we see that that's completely different than what we get when we use the CX gate. And this is because this result is equivalent to the tensor product of the individual states we get for each of the qubits. So it's tensoring this superposition state with itself. Well, we might argue that, that these two states might look different, but these are just mathematical objects that help us capture the statistics of measuring our quantum states. But couldn't we say that if we measure the same statistics in this bottom qubit for both of these two circuits, that this gate is indeed effectively copying the state to the bottom? Well, let's see what the probabilities for measuring this bottom state look like in these two cases. So let's give a name to the state vector, let's call it C, and this bottom state vector, let's call it D. And for simplicity, let's actually import from Qiskit visualization this plot histogram function so we can compare them. And if we take state C and use the sample counts method for let's say a thousand samples, but here we pass as an argument only that bottom qubit, so qubit zero, and store that in a variable, this will give us the statistics of measuring a thousand times that bottom qubit. And then we can do the same thing for state D and we can compare them using this plot histogram function, which as we can see, give us almost exactly the same statistics. And we can change that angle theta to let's say pi over 10 and repeat this experiment. We see that the statistics always match. So one could argue that from a standpoint of just calculating the probabilities of this bottom qubit, we are indeed effectively copying this top qubit to the bottom. However, the thing we have to keep in mind is that this has to hold true even if we apply other operations after this copy gate. So if we, for example, were to apply the inverse of this gate here at the bottom, we should effectively undo this operation and recover state zero if this is is indeed copying that state effectively. So here we can apply the same gate, but let's do it to the bottom qubit. And in case case, if we want to apply the inverse, which is the transpose conjugate of this operation, we can use this inverse method. So what this will mean is that if we are indeed undoing the operation after copying the qubit, we should get state zero here at the bottom. And we can do the same thing for our other circuit let's make sure we regenerate our states. And if we were to now compare the statistics of those two circuits, we see that they differ. In the case of where we are not copying the operation, but just generating it directly in that bottom qubit, we measure state zero with 100% probability. So all our shots are here. But in the other case, we're still getting some probability amplitudes for state one. And we can change that angle to make that more noticeable. So here we can see a big difference. So our CX gate is indeed not effectively copying that state at the bottom. So that's all for this video. And as always, please let me know if you have any questions.